Presented here are the assembly details for the Blazing Tube hybrid solar cooker. There are seven main shipped components for your complete Blazing Tube unit. One, the cookbox components. Two, main frame structure. Three, glass solar vacuum tube. Four, wood burner. Five, wood burner stand. Six, protective wire mesh. And seven, reflector sheet. After unpacking the various boxes, the frame structure will be first to be assembled. Lay out the first metal frame pieces. And slide these three together. Using 10 millimeter bolt sets from bag one. to permanently fasten these three together. A total of seven bolt sets will be used for each side of the main frame. Next, take the four different metal spanners and the number two bag of bolts in order to connect the two frame sides together. Start with the upper spanner, which attaches in the upper middle frame position. Thread two bolt sets into each end of this upper middle spanner. Then do the same installation of the lower middle spanner with four more bolts. Next is the upper end spanner, positioned with bracket facing up, and bolts. Finally, the lower front spanner, with flat plate oriented inside, requires four bolts and two screws to be fastened. Use bag three of bolts to mount the vacuum tube holder to the lower front spanner with the rubber opening facing inside.
the two wheels can be attached using the threaded axle. The axle uses cotter pins and self-lock nuts to maintain the wheels in place. Finally, the wheels can receive the cover caps. The legs of the main frame receive a metal cross bracing, which is also screwed together at the four ends to stabilize the entire frame structure. Bolt bag 4 is used to mount the flat metal ribs to the main frame in three places. The reflective sheet is now installed with both the flat bar and angle lengths supporting its two longest lengths. Bolts are used to attach these components to the flat metal ribs. Three stiffener rods also need to be positioned over the top of the curved reflector sheet and included in the bolting process. This will expose the shiny, mirrored, highly reflective metal surface. There is a protective plastic film which now needs to be pulled from the surface of the aluminum reflector. This will expose the shiny, mirrored, highly reflective metal surface. The cook box can now be slid into the proper opening at the upper end of the main frame between the two upper spanners. Bolts provided in bag 5 can fasten the cook box to the frame. Open the cook box and remove the cook pan assembly. Tighten the metal hose clamp to this metal assembly. Take the glass vacuum tube and insert the open end into the cook box lower opening, far enough to then allow the closed end to be drawn back into the rubber cylindrical metal tube holder. Unscrew the bottom cover of the cook box and remove the insulation.
place the cook pan assembly into the cook box so that the silicone ring will slip over the open end of the glass tube. From below, attach the second hose clamp around the bottom of the silicone ring to seal the glass tube. Do not over tighten this clamp. Then look for metal tabs welded to the top side of the cook pan. Drive screws through the tabs which will secure the cook pan assembly to the metal angle supports inside the cook box. The thermometer may now be inserted through the outside of the cook box in holes provided for fastening screws. The bottom cover including the insulation, should now be reinstalled using the original screws in the holes provided. Then the trumpet-shaped metal protruding out of the bottom of the cookbox must be further insulated with the metal shroud then slid into place and fastened with screws. It is time to mount the wire mesh cover over the glass tube area of the curved reflector. Insert metal rod through the lower welded tabs and screw this into place with the two prongs facing inside. The wire mesh assembly can now be slipped over these two prongs and then bolted at the top end using the wing nut. A second rod is also inserted through the welded frame tabs and nut fastened. Now, moving to the upper metal tabs near the cook box, the fabric cover can be installed. The crank handle can be unscrewed and separated to allow the upper fabric cover rod to slip into the metal tab and then re-screwed together with the crank handle. The fabric cover can now be drawn down with ease and secured. then wound up again and locked in position using the swivel metal fastener. The wood burner pedestal can now be assembled with cross braces and screws. The wood burner can now be properly positioned below the trumpet protrusion under the bottom of the cook box for backup heat if needed. Approximately six liters of vegetable oil will fill the blazing tube interior. Pour this oil through the perforated bottom opening in the cook pan. Be certain never to fill the blazing tube in sunlight, otherwise thermal shock may explode the glass tube. Always fill in a shaded location with the fabric cover pulled down over the vacuum tube. Now the cook pot can be positioned into the cook pan and locked by turning slightly. The blazing tube unit is ready to cook. 90 minutes in direct sunlight will preheat the unit for hours of high temperature cooking time. After a year of service, this oil will need to be changed. Turning the BT unit gently on its side will allow the old oil to drain out of the cook pan. New oil can then be resupplied to the blazing tube unit.